I was just reading an article that was posted on the Richard Dawkins website, richarddawkins.net, uh, and it was an article written by Michael Roost, who is a, a scientist, as far as I'm aware. Um, but he's considered something of a, an apologist or a, an accommodationist. Those kind of terms are used for, about him because he, uh, although he claims to be an atheist, he has a lot of time for religious believers. He doesn't. He argues against a kind of um, binary opposition between religion and science, uh, and argues very strongly against. Uh, what he refers to as the new atheists, which is, you know, Dawkins, Dennett, Sam Harris, and uh, Christopher Hitchens. Uh, not just against their, not so much actually against their, what they say, although it, there is a certain amount of that, but he mostly argues that their, uh, that their tactics are counterproductive. I don't know if that's the case or not, but one of the things that really strikes the core with me is what he says, and other people have said before, uh, is to do with uh, you know, how people argue against religion. Uh, and the, the claim is, that he makes at least, as I say, I've, I've read have other people make, is that in you know, fantastic books like The God Delusion, which I just think is, a, is superbly written, um, he says that the, the religion that's described in there and attacked in there and, and, and critiqued in there is, uh, is not really... Uh, as, as the religion that would be held by, well, most thinking theologians, I guess. Uh, which is it's, it's a bit problematic, really, but, uh, for a number of reasons, even though I can kind of see his point. Uh, I mean, the first thing is that the the religion that is critiqued in The God Delusion and in, in uh, uh, Christopher Hitchens' book, for example, the religions that are critiqued in it are absolutely the religions and the beliefs and the practices that are held and that are practiced by probably just the majority of people who claim to be members of that religion. You know, most p people, I suspect, who call themselves Christians, uh, hold it pretty much as an act of faith. Well, they say they hold it as an act of faith, and therefore they must believe it in some way, that things like the virgin birth and the resurrection and the various miracles and ideas like original sin are completely literal. There's nothing metaphorical and strange about that. It's completely literal. Uh, so the fact that a number of what are sometimes thought of as thinking theologians are uh, slightly more silent on those subjects is partly beside the point. You know, if the rank and file of a, of a particular religious faith do believe these things, it seems perfectly valid to criticise the faith on those grounds. The second thing is to do with the fact that these thinking theologians, uh, supposed thinking theologians, uh, might hold other views. The difficulty there is, it's really hard to figure out what those views are. I mean, I've read quite a lot of uh, stuff from theologians. Alistair, what's he called? I can't get his name now. Alistair something. He wrote um, The Dawkins Delusion. It's a kind of repost to Dawkins' God Delusion. Uh, McGrath, that's it, Alistair McGrath, and a number of others, uh, you know, say there's more to it than that. They kind of argued the possible existence of a, of a set of beliefs, of a faith, of a, of a religion called, for example, Christianity, which isn't anything like that uh, nuts and bolts version of Christianity held by the rank and file, and it is more mystical, and that Dawkins et al. can't come even close to criticising and how these new atheists are terribly naive by not addressing this much more sophisticated version of their faith, but they never actually say what that is. That's the difficulty I always have with that stuff. I really want them to tell, <laughs> to tell me what that is, because I'd love to understand it myself. Um, they just, just don't do it. And they, so they come across as very kind of slippery, I think, and very, uh, well, in some cases, arrogant, because there seems to be a kind of claim for a special kind of access to knowledge or a special way of knowledge, or, or something like that, that the, uh, you know, those mere mortals can't possibly understand, or are too stupid to understand, or don't have the subtlety of cognitive abilities to be able to understand. And, and it's just a shame, really, because I would like to understand, and if it is, 
if it is a, if it is a problem with my stupidity or my lack of sophistication, I would love someone to tell me how to gain that sophistication. So, you know, I'm all ears. I'm just waiting for the explanation to be given to me. But no one's giving it. So they come across as slippery and deliberately obscure and deliberately obfuscatory in many cases. So that's a, a, a problem that I have. And which I have to say Michael Ruiz is, is also guilty of. He, kind, he, he critiques Dawkins' critique of religion without saying what this religion really is. <laughs> Uh, and I'd love to know. I mean, the nearest I can get to a kind of thought myself is really an echo of what Dawkins himself says, but it's, it's pretty commonplace, I think, amongst many thinking scientists, if I can oppose those to thinking theologians, which is this phrase that he has, which I really like, which is that science is the poetry of reality. Science is the poetry of reality, which means that... Um, you know, the mechanisms by which we come to understand the world at the most basic level, at the level of sensory perception, sensory awareness, as well as these great cathedrals of ideas and great um, edifices of, of thought that we're able to construct around those perceptions and the great predictions we're able to make on the back of those things, uh, that, those, uh, that those mechanisms can be understood kind of poetically and respond to... Um, to po poetic interrogation and probably spring from poetic processes, cognitive processes. Uh, and, I, and I saw quite like the idea of that. So I am I, I'm kind of thinking about the same thing towards religion, although there is a blank in the sentence. You know, if science is the poetry of reality, what is religion the poetry of? Because I'd like to know. I really would. Uh, I mean, just to, just to hark back on that science is the poetry of reality thing, I mean, Dawkins isn't alone in that. Uh, Jacques Rancière talks about knowledge as being a set of poetics, and when he's talking about the poetics of knowledge, he is very much talking about empirical knowledge, scientific knowledge, and how particular processes take place. Not fundamentally different from the processes which uh, produce other kinds of knowledge, but there's a particular genre of cognitive and behavioural process which results, results in empirical knowledge. So uh, that poetic knowledge that Rancière talks about I think is the same, or I'm, I'm approaching it the same way and in the same spirit to which I'm approaching Dawkins talking about reality uh, and science being the poetry of that reality. So what's religion the poetry of, just to return to that question? I haven't got an answer, of course. I mean, the nearest thing I can come to it is to do with this idea of binding. And I'm just being etymologically uh, fundamentalist here. Given that the word religion has its origins in binding together again, um, I quite like the idea that there is something in the act of, uh, of binding, something in the which is... is descriptive of a kind of religious sensibility in the broadest sense, so it would cover the established religions, but also religious naturalism, or a more thoroughgoing kind of religious attitude, if you like. But it's to do with a binding together again, and, uh, and particularly a binding together of individuated, personal, uh, psychological, embodied experience, and some aspect of the wider world, call it nature, or call it the universe, or call it other people, whatever that may be, but uh, but a kind of project which aims to bind together individual sensibility, individual existence, individual being, with a kind of broader sense of being. Uh, that project, I think, is, is worthy enough to demand a kind of poetics of its own, and if it did, then uh, I would be perfectly happy to call that particular poetics religion. It would have different values, different claims, different ontological status, different empirical status, different social structures around it than other kinds of poetics, but it would be perfectly valid. Look at my dog. Look at it. Hi. Smile for the camera. Smile. He doesn't do smiling. <laughs>